Hi guys, welcome to the Homestead Dream Channel. Today we're going to be making plum wine. All the plums are ripe. We have a whole bunch of little ones that what else do you do with them besides make jam or jelly or wine? Hey guys, I know I look silly standing here holding up this little bottle of Sandstar cleaner, but I just wanted to emphasize that the first thing we did was to sanitize our area and implements so that we had a clean, sterilized environment to make wine. You want to make sure not to have even one molecule of vinegar near your area because it can turn your wine into vinegar and you don't want that. We use Santa Rosa plums that we grow ourselves. We usually harvest our plums in July. They have a deep, rich, sweet flavor that makes them a perfect blend of flavor for wine. I will post the measurements that we used at the end of this video, so make sure you watch it to the end. If you use wild plums, which are generally high in acid, you can use an acid tester or cut down to three pounds per gallon for your wine. Once you get all the plums picked and into your buckets, you will need to sort through them, discarding any undesirable plums. You can tell if they are overly ripe if they pop open when you wash them in water. Washing the plums in the sandstone, we're getting all the defective ones out. They might be overly ripe or looks like a curder got to them. Setting them to the side. Which we're doing pretty good because we already got like 20 pounds and this is all that's in our discard pile, which we're going to put it back in the compost so nothing goes to waste. Wash and wash and wash. 10 million, 10 million one. Now that we've washed and weighed our plums, these are the leftovers that we didn't need and we're going to lay them on the table to dry. Next, we're going to remove the pits and cut them into small pieces. We try to make all, our, all of our mundane tasks a lot of fun. <laughs> I got that on film. <laughs> You need to add all the sugar to hot water and dissolve it. When it's all dissolved, it will become clear. Add the hot sugar water to your sanitized six gallon bucket. Add enzyme, acid blend, yeast nutrients, and crushed candom tablets into your bucket with the sugar water. Stir the ingredients. Add cold water, fill to about the four gallon mark. Let it cool before you add your mesh bag. Now that you have your fruit in the bag, in the bucket, you need to mix the sugar water with the fruit. Then tie the bag and tuck it down into the bucket. Make sure that you have the one and a half to two inches on top 
so that the water doesn't get into your airlocks. If you need more water, add more water till you have that. What we do is we create a wine log so that we know everything that we put into our wine so that we can figure out what works and what doesn't. And to record everything that you need to record about it. You record the specific gravity, the pH, and in three to five days you'll be measuring the specific gravity and the pH to determine if you need to remove the mesh bag or not. Okay, so now our wine is sat for 24 hours and it's time to get the yeast ready. So this is all for rehydrating the yeast. So we use this go firm which gives the yeast the proper nutrients to rehydrate. So it only takes a little bit. It only takes about a gram of this to uh, give it all the nutrients and protect the yeast. So just mix that in the water. Let the water cool down to uh, the yeast says to let it cool down between 80 and 95 degrees. So we'll let the water cool down and then we'll add the yeast. And after we add the yeast to the water, we need to let the yeast sit for 20 minutes and then we'll add the yeast. We'll open the mesh bag and we'll pour the yeast into the mesh bag seal it back up again and we're pretty much done adding the yeast. Now that our water is cool, add the yeast to the water to rehydrate it. Just mix it in. sure it's cool because if it's too hot it'll kill all the yeast. Okay, we got it mixed in, set our timer, 20 minutes, and then we can add it to our, our uh, mesh. You want to avoid cross contamination so you have to re-sanitize in between if you do multiple buckets to re-sanitize every single time in between each bucket. Now that it has been 24 hours, it's time to stir the fruit inside the mesh bag. Now is the time to take the pH measurements and the specific gravity. If you don't take the specific gravity of the wine at this point, you will not be able to calculate how much alcohol the wine actually has at the end. Now that it's been 20 minutes, the yeast is ready to add to the fruit. Now we can tie the bag up, tuck it back in, put on the lid, and put the airlock on.
Now it's time to put the airlock in. At this point, anything that touches your wine must be sanitized or it may ruin the whole batch. Now you will want to stir daily. Check specific gravity and press pulp lightly to aid in extraction. When your ferment reaches specific gravity, 1.040 in about 3 to 5 days, squeeze your juice lightly from bag. Siphon off any wine sediment into glass secondary and attach the airlock. When your ferment reaches 1.000 about in three weeks, siphon off sediment into a clean secondary and reattach the lock. To aid clearing, siphon off again in two, mo two months and again if necessary before you bottle it. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button and God bless.